What's up, everyone? Thank you for stopping by the Achieve Financial Coaching Channel, where we believe in breaking the chains of debt and talking about all things related to personal finance. Today's video is a little bit different. I want to start having conversations with everyday people who have backgrounds like many of us who didn't start for much, but are trying to do some extraordinary things to leave a legacy and secure their financial future. Today, I'm talking to a good friend of mine who I played ball with back in the day. His name is Roosevelt Noble. And what he decided was that him and his family wanted to start a family bank. And so when they had financial needs, that they could go inside of the family instead of taking their business outside of the family to somewhere else or just going to you know some of the everyday banks that we use. So I want to have this conversation because I want this to inspire you to start thinking about some of the things you may want to do yourself or with your family. You're only limited by your ideas and your willingness to put in the work to get these things done. So take a listen to this conversation. It's a very good conversation, may give you some great ideas. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment and share this with friends. Thanks for stopping by. So Dr. Roosevelt Noble, thank you for joining me uh, here at Achieve Financial Coaching for today's talk. So if you could, could you tell us a little bit about your background uh, financially? Did you come from money? Was your family well off? Just give us a little bit information there. Uh, yes, thank you for having me. Um, I am uh, Dr. Roosevelt Noble. Uh, I am originally from Kankakee, Illinois, which is a small town about 45 minutes straight south of Chicago. Um, did not come from, from financial wealth or um, a silver spoon by any means. Uh, my family, uh, my mom and dad actually had started their family relatively young. Uh, so if you can imagine, um, by the time my mom was 21, she had four kids. Yeah. Uh, so that doesn't, that doesn't kind of set you up for a very successful profile. Uh, so we didn't necessarily come from money, uh, but we did come from a tremendous amount of love, uh, I would say. And, and that love, the residual impact of that love is what really allowed us to be able to kind of walk into this this family savings group that actually kind of has grown into our own personal bank kind of thing. So that is awesome, man. You know, hey, good foundation, mm -hmm. at least from a love standpoint, but not necessarily on the money tip. Right. So yeah. let's get into this, man. Um, so why did you decide to do the family bank, uh, Rosie? And how was that idea received when you first put it out there? So what started it? What started it for me was coming to the realization that um, I was the first person in the family to graduate from college. And, and you graduate from Vanderbilt. And that's like, that's that good school. That's right. And, and everybody kind of, you know, expects you to have that good job. And, and you become the kind of the person that people can come to when they need financial assistance for anything. And we had a series of uh, incidents that happened in, in quick succession um, back in like April of 2002. And, I, and it just kind of hit me. I was like, this, this will not be sustainable. It will not be sustainable for me to be the one that kind of is helping people out all the time. I love my yeah. family and love to help them. Uh, but I thought back to the, you know, the adage of give a person a fish, you feed them for a day, teach them how to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. And okay. so um, back in April of 2002 is when I first, again, just came up with the idea of like, we have, we need to have some, a family emergency fund set aside. And that's all it was initially supposed to be like a family emergency fund. Uh, and so I spent some time kind of doing some research um, and pitched the idea to my family in September, 2002. And everybody was on board with it from jump. Um, and we okay. started in September, 2002 with the basic premise of let's, let's save a little small amount of money. Um, and we had we had we set some initial goals and, and some initial policies and rules around how we would use it. Uh, but the goal was to save a small amount of money. We want to increase what we saved every year by a certain amount. Um, and it was very well received. And I think part of a, part of why it was well received was because, like I said, going back to that foundation of love and that foundation of trust. Yeah, um, they they my family trusted me. My family put up had a lot of belief in me. And, and, and again, as the one who went to this good school, I, they presumed that I knew what I was talking about. Um, and so that, that, that was, it wasn't a hard sell at all. Uh, it was a relatively easy sell to get people on board. And, and once we started in September, 2002, it's been turning ever since. And we're coming up on, uh, there'll be 20 years, uh, in September, 2022. So, wow. So 20 years in this game now. So I imagine you've worked some things out. So let's just go back a little bit, Rosie, just so, um, just a few questions I want to make sure that my listeners get. So how is this bank, this family bank organized? Like, so how do you all receive deposits? Mm -hmm. How do you withdraw money? How does that work with this, with this family bank? Okay, so there's a couple of different uh, ways in which people submit their payments. Uh, when, I, when we first started, 
I would actually send monthly statements, just like you get your cell phone bill, electric bill. Yeah. I would send monthly statements with a self-addressed stamp and envelope. Say, hey, send this back to me. Uh, it's due on the 19th. The 19th has always been our due date for, for 20, almost 20 years, right? Okay. Um, we've graduated from that to where people don't need me to send send them these reminders anymore. Because uh, now I, I, there are some people that I have a brother-in-law who does their fam- their payment through military allotment. Um, my, my brother is a Zelle payment. Uh, my sister, who's also in the military, there's this, her, her bank cuts me a check. Uh, okay. mom, mom is old school. Mom would just leave me a stack of checks for the year and say, deposit this one on the first of September, deposit this one on the first. So the October. bank has some flexibility uh, on how yeah, you yeah, flex, flexibility money. and how payments come in, flexibility <laughs> and how payments come in. And, um, and as far as like money's going out, um, We have, you know, various loan programs, uh, various emergency assistance programs, various retirement programs. For example, there's a short term loan, which is 30 to 60 days. We have long term loans, which is 24 to uh, 18 to 12 to 24 months. Um, We have um, small business loans that we've done for each other. Um, We have kind of like almost like a retirement fund set up to where we, we contribute money to take care of our parents, uh, for example. I love that piece. Yeah. Talk so about that a little bit. Bro. Yeah. So we have what we call like our um, uh, longevity fund where uh, right now, for example, my mom and dad and my mother-in-law, like my wife and I, we put money aside every month to be able to take care of them, uh, you know, when they reach that age of either long-term care uh, or being able to help them out financially, you know, after they're completely retired as an income assessment, uh, income uh increase or addition to their normal retirement income right. um, but we have that program longevity but we also have sunset which is a program that like uh like my dad is currently in for example he, he he's put into the group for 20 some almost 20 years whereas now that he's retired he's he's gradually starting to withdraw his money out uh and save monthly allotments uh so it's kind of like you know social security income or whatever, but this is yeah. money that he saved in the group's account that he's now walking slowly back out. So there's there's a number of different ways in which people can access their money to kind of come out or borrow it or use it um, as, as as well as all of the ways that it comes in. There's multiple ways in which it goes out. And there's policies, rules, processes around how all of that stuff happens. So you structured all of that. And so it sounds like there are people with in varying needs, right? Like mm-hmm. someone that's our age, Rosie, because you and I are closer in age, even though I got a couple of years on you. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I, we're in the growth phase. Like, yeah. I want my money to grow. Your dad, mm-hmm. right, as, mm-hmm. as, as he's sunsetting, he has some needs. Like, look, I, I don't want my money to be invested aggressively. So mm-hmm. talk to me about how you've organized the funds that either save or invest yeah. for your family bank. Yeah, so we have, there's, there's two different primary fund sides in terms of uh, we have what we call GEO, which is Guaranteed Investment Options, and then there's RIO, which is Risk Investment Options. On the GEO side... Uh, that money primarily sits in like some online bank platforms, yeah. uh, Ally, uh, Capital One 360. Uh, some of these accounts where, you, you know, you get the, the rate is, the interest rate is going to be higher than a normal brick and mortar. Uh, we may do some things like uh, CD investments, uh, certificates of deposit. Very conservative uh, sort of on that side. Yeah. That guaranteed very option. Very conservative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas on the real side, uh, the real side is where uh, you are exploring things like the stock market. Uh, there's real estate. Uh, we purchase land. Um, my grandmother, for example, was selling some land that she had, and we collectively kind of decided, hey, we're going to buy that land as opposed to letting somebody else buy it. Um, awesome. So there's certain things that are were on the real side, and, and there's different risk profiles because some people, you know, maybe a little bit more conservative from others, as you mentioned, like my dad and mom, they're older, so their 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 risk tolerance is not as high as say my niece and nephew who's 24 and 22. Um, right. And so the geo side is where um, we're we're building that back up. Um, and, and right now the plan on the G on the Rio side, rather, is to have everybody, um, of, of the funds that we don't have allocated and say real estate and other purposes on the investment side, it'll probably be a robo advising kind of platform, say, a, um, not to kind of shameless plug anybody, but a betterment or a wealth front kind of, yeah. kind of environment to where, um, you know, you can manage, you can set your risk tolerance level and, and basically set it and forget it and just basically start making these monthly payments. Um, but with the idea and with the intention of that, you know, that's money that you could potentially lose um, because it depends on how the stock market goes and things like that. But you can set your profile and you can set your tolerance level to mitigate and minimize some of that. So, Absolutely. All right, man. So so just talk to me like you mentioned the land. Mm-hmm. I heard the land purchase. Just just give me an idea. Just a couple more questions, Rosa, here. 
what are some of the things you all have used the money for? I know there was the purchase of the land, but like, what are some other things like where the family came to you and like, look, I need a loan from the family bank. I'm not going to yeah. Bank of America. I'm coming yeah. to the family bank. So yeah. give me a couple uh, examples. Uh, uh, one example, my mom has a catering business. And so when she was first growing her catering business and she wanted to get a van. Uh, so there's a van like right now parked at my parents' house that has Deb's kitchen on it. Yeah. Uh, that van was purchased. She, she took out a small business loan. She had to make a full-fledged business presentation as if she was going into the bank. The family voted and she she got that loan. Uh, I'm a professional photographer as well. And at one point in time, I wanted to upgrade my cameras. Um, and so instead of me, you know, borrowing money from any other place, I did the same thing. I had to make a presentation before the family where I had to say, this is a going rate for photography in the national area. This is how long I think it would take me to make this money back and all of that. And so I ended up basically upgrading my equipment uh, using money from the family. Most recently, my sister uh, wanted to purchase a car for my nephew. And, and she, she wasn't trying to buy him anything fancy, a little $10,000 car, something to get him from A to B. Um, but instead of her buy, borrowing that money from the bank, or so basically she, she contacted me because he's at Fort Campbell, he's in the military. Uh, she said, hey, I'm, I'm gonna take out a loan. He's gonna come to Nashville. You, take, you go with him to the dealership. We're paying for this car in cash. Yeah. Uh, to the dealership, but then we're going to pay it back to the family in a monthly ins in installment. So her look, she six hundred and fifty-three dollars and seventy-five cent is what she sends me every month. Okay. <laughs> to, 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 go, to cover the loan, but the car is paid for, kind of thing. So that's awesome, man. All right. So to wrap this thing up, this is sounds like this has really been a blessing to the family. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there have been some growing pains. So now that you've been at this for almost twenty years, you were a young cat when you started this thing, man. Mm -hmm. Like, so what are some things you would talk to people about if they want to do this. So tips, um, the things you've learned over the years, if you want to get this bank thing started in your family, you must do what? What are some things to think? About? Yeah. Yeah. One of the first things I would say is you got to, you got to start, start with this, a relatively small core group where there's a certain level of trust and there's a certain level of love and everybody's kind of on the same mental wavelength, meaning that, that people are, not, are understanding this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is about long-term generational wealth, uh, family stability, financial independence, make sure that everybody's on board with that kind of concept. Not, I'm putting my money down on Tuesday, I want it out on Thursday. Like, right. You, you got to have that mentality. So the mentality is important in having a group of people who, have, who share that mentality. Uh, second, you want to also make sure that you're setting realistic and obtainable goals, right? Uh, we didn't say, hey, we want to save a million dollars in our first year. No, that first year we saved $1,500. $1,500 yeah. was a goal for what we saved in that first year. Good to know. Uh, so it was a relatively small, obtainable goal that once you can see some level of success, people get more and more bought in, more and more invested when they can see some level of success. We didn't set ourselves up a failure by setting some unrealistic goal. Um, the third thing is you got to have clearly defined rules, structures, policies, um, make sure that every, and, and these are all things that everybody has voted on. So it's not like a, a dictatorship and that this is me saying, this is how we're going to do this. So it's like, no, let's, let's talk about what, what are the rules around a small term loan, a short term yeah. loan. What are the rules around the small business loan? What do we what do we expect them from people to be able to do? Um, you also got to make sure that you are constantly and continuously kind of reminding people of the why. After you've done the policies and procedures and you set the goals, you got to keep reminding people of the why. Yeah. It's not like a, you say it on the front end and you never come back to it again. You got to constantly keep reminding them because especially as life keeps happening, that's going to be part of the why. As my like before I had kids, I was invested in it. But now that I have kids, like I'm even extra invested in it because that's that's part of my why because the generational wealth concept is about we're leaving this for them and for their kids on, on our level at least on the more practical end um setting up a family bank account um yeah and, and, and a bank account that that um preferably in one that is growing faster than say a brick and mortar so you can kind of maximize the interest that you're accruing um getting the federal EIN number, uh, protecting you for tax purposes to make sure. And that's something that we didn't do in the, in the, in the immediacy. When we first started, we didn't have a, a, a EIN number. Not uh, an LLC, you just have an EIN number. Yes, yep, not an okay. LLC, just an EIN number. Um, and, and, and probably my, most important in all of this, uh, if, I'm, if I'm counting points, this would be like number seven, um, is you have to identify a family nerd. Um, or, or, or nerds in the family. I wonder who uh, that is in your family. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and this is this is going back to Dave Ramsey. And, and Ramsey would say that every family, there's the free birds and there's the nerds. Because you have to have somebody that is meticulous, meticulously kind of calculating and keeping up with all of this information um, and, and, and to make sure that like the money is where it's supposed to be. Everything is, is, is all of the, all of the dollars and cents add up. 
Um, and to that point, too, I would say transparency is important. Uh, you want to make sure as part of how you keep and maintain that level of trust with people is making sure that they see that like the money's always there, uh, whether it's a monthly statement, whether it's quarterly meetings, uh, whatever you want to make sure that people can kind of feel safe about where the money is, how it's growing, what it's invested in, uh, and that sort of thing, and, and that they feel like they have, they're actively involved and act, actively engaged kind of throughout the process beyond just, I send my money and I have no clue where it is, how it's doing and so forth. You got to kind of actively keep people engaged in it. So. Awesome. It sounds like you have a good process, Roseanne. Over almost 20 years, I imagine that would that would happen. Mm -hmm. But just real quick, this is really the last question, I promise. How much time does it take you every month to collect everyone's information, add it to the, to the system, receive payments, pay out people that may need, like how, how much time do you spend with that every month, you say? It, it is a very minimal. Actually, I, it's funny because after I, I did a financial session a couple of weeks ago, I, I timed myself last month doing it. It takes me about 27 minutes. OK. And, yeah. that, and that's and, and that's all I do. About 27 minutes to do all of the stuff that I need to do. Uh, and, and, and most of that is just me on, like sitting at a computer, transferring this, doing like doing that, because the files themselves, um, after I do the online transfer and what I need to transfer, uh, I've just built all of the, the files. I built it like a, this elaborate system of Excel files where I, yeah. I can change it in one file and then just open the other file and it's going to automatically do all the stuff I needed to do and then just save it and move on to the next month kind of thing. So Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, Rosie, I really appreciate it, man. You have been a dear friend to me for a long time. We played ball together at yes. Vanderbilt and it's great to see someone who comes from a background, like not a silver spoon in your mouth, mm -hmm. a lot of love in the house, but you didn't, re you didn't receive an inheritance. And now the things you're building to leave that legacy to your family, man, I appreciate it. So thank you for joining me today, sir. Appreciate it, Kenny. Thank you for having me, man. All right, always, man. always happy to support. Anchor down. No doubt. Anchor down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a comment, and sharing this video with some friends. Check out some of the other videos we've made as well. Remember this. You can achieve much greater things than where you are today if you're willing to put in the work. Conceive it, believe it, and achieve it. I'll see you on the next video.